I love that. When I see Germany with Ta, with Rudiger, with Andres, then you know it's Ocean 11 or Nagelsmann's 11 going for it. Hi and welcome to the German Fußball Podcast. I'm your host, Marcus Fjertoft, and I'm here to speak with co-host Jan Fjertoft about the Germany game, about the euphoria ahead of the Euros at home in Germany. But before we go into that, Dad, it is Easter. It's a bit of a different backdrop for you as well. Are you on a, like a little fitness spree, a little uh, comeback tour, but uh, but on skis? <laughs> I am. And as you know, Norwegians, uh, they tend to go in the mountains during uh, Easter. And we start early. And the reason I started early this time, I came up here on Saturday, meaning that on Friday, I went to see Norway against Czech Republic. Sad game, uh, sad everything when Norway is not at the Euros. Everybody will be there at, except us. You have that feeling. Yeah, so we came up on Saturday, and as we do speak today, today is Wednesday. Today I've been twice uh, out across wow. the country, once alone and once with your mother. So uh, uh, so we had a, a good session, and uh, I'm preparing myself for, uh, for, for the weekend. I'm doing Manchester City against Arsenal, the big one. Uh, but there was a lot of uh, going on this this week, Marcus. And as as I was saying, I was I I went to one game. I saw the Czech Republic. I saw saw on TV Norway play Slovakia. So that's for the Norwegians, Erling Haaland and Martin Odegaard and Oscar Bob all coming fit back to their clubs. We'll talk about more of that later. But you talk, Marcus, about Germany. Can you imagine two games? Just change the mood. I'm not <laughs> saying just of a football nation. Yeah. The whole the whole nation of Germany. Yeah, really turned it around. And there was a lot of question marks, a lot of them. And bear in mind, Germany have really been poor, right? And, and very much since the World Cup win in 2014, there's just been a steady kind of decline in performances. And as such, like you say, that will ultimately affect the mood, the inspiration that surrounds the national team. But talk about two games that turn around that. First, an impressive 2-0 uh, win away to France. Yes, a friendly, but away to France. And you could see it in the reaction of Nagelsmann, the players, in the way they approached it. It was very much a, I wouldn't say a do-or-die scenario, but it was important for them to get the answers that they needed ahead of those two last games ahead of the Euros. Because then very much you're hoping to get your 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 starting 11 set you're hoping to get a certain structure in mind and germany certainly have that i don't know how how would you reflect on these on these two games in terms of the answers that germany uh, very much have gotten as they say in uh, one of the my favorite podcasts, rest is politics uh, rory is always you saying never to, quote to, rory here you never say that i always <laughs> love them I know, you know i've done it again to give the viewers the, the, the listeners a bit of the background meaning that germany are the host of the euros i mean people some some will know that of course but that gives you a uh, responsibility especially as a as a big nation, when a smaller nation will do it, it's a more like an occasion. It's more like we're so proud everybody coming there that nearly the, the, the time of sport comes in background. But with Germany, that's different. Uh, going back to 2006, remember what that did to Germany, to Germany's reputation, to Ge everybody loved Germany, the way they may make events and of course in 74 when they hosted the the, the world cup uh, and they won it by the way west germany so this now has been a part nearly that they've been embarrassed that they're going to host this with a terrible national team as they've had hansi flick was fired this is the first time that germany has ever fired a coach they put up a, a advisory board taking a rudy Fowler, and what they all called in there, this is emergency. We have to sort it out. So Julian Nagelsmann is free. Julian Nagelsmann, I guess, didn't plan to be a national coach in the, the coming 30 years. He's still a young, young coach. And he comes in and he said, after some terrible results, he said after, in March, the time of experiments is over. So the team you see now is more or less the team you will get. So 
when they won now away at France and they played an arch rival, arch rival uh, the Netherlands at home, there wasn't a lot of change to, to his game. But not only that, Marcus, what I liked about this team, and I said it on ESPN the other day, but I will repeat it. When you do Ocean Eleven, you need your Brad Pitt, you need your George Clooney. That's okay. But to succeed in your robbery, you need an Andrich. You need someone coming out there, Marcus. And when you saw, I love that. When I see Germany with Ta, with Rudiger, with Andrich, then you know it's Ocean Eleven or Nagelsmann's Eleven going for it. That's what you need in your team to protect players like Florian Wirtz, like Muziala, that we all know that will be fantastic at the Euros. And I haven't even started about Tony Cross. You can mention that later. Well, I mean, why don't we go into Tony Cross? Because for the way I see yeah. it, is it he's very much the conductor of this team, and and we know Tony Cross's qualities. Tony Cross will go down as one of the best German midfielders ever in terms of what he has accomplished. But when you see what you haven't had, and then you get what you get with Tony Cross returning to the national team, and he was cautious about saying that I'm the saving grace of this team, and that's. A lot to do maybe with his style of, of play and in terms of just con conducting and controlling and setting the tempo very what like he very much did in these games. But wow, what an impact he had. And then you can have then an Andrich next to you because you have the Tony Cross and it just seemed like with him slotting in there, it automatically just gave this balance to the team. I mean, it was um, it was well, really rather remarkable to see the effect he had on that team. Yeah, and started after one second uh, because <laughs> at the kickoff for those who didn't see it ball back to cross who did exactly like a quarterback in american football he took the ball a bit backwards and then germany just attacked harvard's get uh, go went wide they opened the space for florian Wirtz. tony cross just played a ball into him florian Wirtz bang after seven seconds one nil for for germany against france the funny fun fact mark is that austria scored against slovakia after six seconds on the same day, that is a that is a fun fact, but just shows you Tony Cross the impact he's having on this team. As you were rightly saying, the, the way he runs the tempo, the way he orchestrates the, the the balance in the team is perfect. And 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 now it changed around, Marcus. If you have a look at the team now, if you see a midfield of Florian Wirtz, Butziala, Gundogan, Andrich. And cross well, 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 England. I know that you'll say you'll have a fantastic midfield, but I think the Germans will turn up and give you a fight for that dream mid midfield. How things change, hey, Marcus? Yeah, it changes indeed. And and you just alluded to it earlier in terms of how, using this international break really to set your eleven. But we have to we have to remind the listener that there were no indication as to where you would go with that team, in a sense. You really had to put these players together. And the solution for Nagelsmann, I guess, was you got a cross, you have a Gundogan, you have that experience. Neuer will be the number one, as they've declared, but you have to go back with an in injury, which obviously is frustrating for Testegen, who did well. But even still, you have the experience, and then you have the 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 Leistungsspieler, the, the, the performance player, the ones in form. And... Therein lies a bit of a risk, of course, because you still have players there that are perhaps a bit unproven on that level. Andrich is fighting for a starting spot at Leverkusen. Obviously, he's competing against a Shaka and a Palacios, a World Cup winner, so you can understand it. Mittelstadt, left back from Stuttgart. At best last season, an okay wing back for Hertha Berlin. Jonathan Ta has been in the national team setup for a long while, never really got his nod, but plays for arguably the most informed team in, in, in Europe. So it's a good little mix that, that Nagelsmann has got now to the point in which there really is perhaps three spots up for grabs in this Germany team. Other than that, you'd like to think that Nagelsmann has, um, yeah, his not only his starting 11 set, but even the players that he brought on were pretty much the same players from the France game to the Netherlands game as well, which is also interesting to discuss that in terms of squad composition. Yeah, and I think what has played well for, for Nagelsmann and German football at the moment, because uh, the German national team equal Bayern performance. How good are Bayern doing? And Bayern the last years, in terms of 
of of Champions League in terms of uh, success internationally haven't been that good. And I, I remember my, our friends Christian Falk and, and uh, Toby Alchef, they, they always thought, well, we just have to get a core buy-in back, but, which they did more or less in Qatar, and it didn't never happen for them. So it's been okay now with with the success of uh, of Stuttgart with the success of Leverkusen, he has been able now, and <laughs> if we had the same discussion 10 days ago, we probably wouldn't have had the same discussion. But now, as for now, he's taking the best out of there. You mentioned Ty, you, you mentioned Andres Mittelstedt. Florian Witz, we knew would flourish, but but still, these players are in there. And then there will still be an, a very important core of Bayern players there. You will have Neuer. Uh, uh, remember, Nagelsmann told Ter Stegen and Neuer before these two games, that Neuer will be his number one. It's it's a bad news for Ter Stegen that he'll, he'll be in the same generation as Neuer because he's an excellent goalkeeper. Then Neuer went home because of an injury. Ter Stegen did his job. You will have Kimmich on the right back. He is in there. When, when, he is, when he is fully concentrated on that job, he will do a great job for them. Then you will have uh, uh, Muziala, of course. Muziala will be there. He will do the, with Wirt doing the different things. And and, I, and Thomas Müller will have a very important job, a, a very important role to fill. A, you can play him from the start anytime because you know he will do his job because he's he's an intelligent player. He knows his place in the hierarchy. And also the hierarchy outside the pitch, he will be very uh, interesting for, or, or good for them. Uh, there was also a signal because uh, Leroy Sané has been been suspended for these two games, so so he wasn't there. But he came to them in Frankfurt. They played the the Netherlands game in Frankfurt. He came in there. I still think Leroy Sané can play a vital role for for Germany because coming to the Euros, you need the match winners. You you need the players who can do that pass, that goal, that set piece for them. And Leroy Sané will play it. Uh, out and then you'll end up with a big discussion. Who will be your striker? Will you play Kai Havertz in that this role as he has done now for two games, as he's doing for Arsenal? So is it? It's it's not your perfect number nine. Then you get Fulkrug on, and of course he scores. Scores the win against Netherlands. I thought it was a handball, but VAR and the referee said it wasn't. So he was the match winner. So there's a lot of interesting things around this German team now, and and as you know, Marcus, the the, the head of Euros uh, 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 24 is a friend of mine. And I, I guess he had uh, some good nights now saying that the German team, because success for the German team equals success for the Euros. That's just how it is. Of course, of course. And uh, you alluded to it there. I, what I find interesting is in terms of that, uh, in terms of the composition, in terms of bringing a Thomas Miller in, etc. It seems like, without being too praising Hallelujah after two games, that the players sort of know their roles in a sense. And I think why I mentioned that is because it does affect the players coming off the bench. So if you have someone as hungry and something to prove as as furish for Stuttgart who comes in. Or you have a Thomas Müller who knows that experience. He knows probably he won't be starting, but even still playing a role. You could have Anton coming in for the defensive solidity, whatnot. It's a bit different having those players around there who are hungry, who have probably more to prove than the players who aren't there. And case in point being, okay, let's talk Sula, Hummels, Schlotterbeck, that's Dortmund. And then the big talking boy being Goretzka being left out. And then the story goes is, is against Japan in the World Cup. Flick brought on Goretzka because he could sense there was a bit of unease in terms of his role, in terms of how he contributes. From your role, Dad, from your experience as a, as a, as a player, sporting director, etc., we pr probably don't tend to think too much about these things from the outside. But in terms of from a team chemistry and being together, hopefully for us a month straight, which the Germany team will do, I'm certain that will be on Nagelsmann's mind in terms of bringing that environment about. And and how interesting this is, uh, and how uh, how tense it is, just shows you that there was a podcast now with Felix Cross, who is the brother of Tony Cross, and they've had this uh, podcast together. And Felix Cross said, uh, "I wouldn't brought Leroy Sané in because he he won't be the players they like to be not be playing." So he kind of said that he will do trouble for the team being in there. And Tony Cross said, "Well, brother." 
I do agree with you mostly, but now I disagree with you. I think Leroy Sané will be very clear of that. The, the thing is, right now, Marcus, is that it put with the success they have now, with the confidence they built over these two games, that give them a great position now because it's only two months, just a, a, a bit more than two months down the road, they have to nominate the squad. So now you've got a squad of, say, 15, 16, that you know you will be there. And then you'll know that the players who will be in now got to be better than the ones who are there now. Well, statistically, some will be injured. Uh, some will maybe have a maybe a terrible run of, of, of games, uh, being a striker, not scoring goals or whatever. But you have that possibility now that everybody needs to be on their toes to stay in there. But you know that these guys who play these two games, they will have a favour. They will have a credit in a bank now two months before. And Julian Nagelsmann doesn't have to experiment so much now. What I do like about this, if you go, go from man to man now, there is always players who are there not, not qualified in the team on merits, just on performance. And I think that Julian Nagelsmann have seen that and he needs to do that. Then you have players like Goretzka, who, by the way, were quite quite good for Bayern lately. But still, you will have players who, in that transition, so to say, will, will be victim of that way of thinking. But hey, this is football. This is uh, performance. This is this is not uh, uh, for everybody to be a part of this. This is performance of the highest level uh, in the most biggest sport in the world. In terms of Nagelsmann, Dad, you mentioned that he, well, he was probably taking on this job maybe 30 years before uh, he'd planned to. Certainly, that was the perception externally as well. Oh, well, we have to get someone older in the helm as Germany coach. How important will it be for him to do well at, at these Euros? He said uh, in an interview that he, if he got a club before the Euros, he will tell people before the Euros. So... We are in a situation now there's a lot of clubs who are looking for their coach, uh, which is quite interesting with Barcelona, uh, Liverpool, maybe Manchester United uh, and Bayern. There's so many clubs that look for a club. Uh, but I think that this success will tempt him to do something else. Uh, I will guess that Rudi Fuller and DFB, the German football F FA, will try now to tie him up for another couple of years. So, a uh, Julian Nagelsmann will have have success with a national team. He will think that, well, two day, years down the road, we have the World Cup, USA, uh, Mexico and Canada. That is tempting. On the other hand, I'm a young coach because I, I, as I see it, my, my, my mate Stolle Sulbakken that I played for now with Norway, there is nothing to fight for. There's, there's National League coming up in September. That is the next competitive game. That is a very lonely game. And you will miss football that much. But I wouldn't be surprised if Julian Nagelsmann just suddenly will be published and he signed new, another two years contract. We know that Jürgen, Jürgen Klopp has said he wants one year off, meaning that he wouldn't be available before 25. But, but still, uh, Julian Nagelsmann, as Germany now come forward with a young coach with pink shirts, uh, I, the last thing I read now before I came on, Marcus, we are we are recording this on Wednesday afternoon, is that uh, Bild Zeitung, the big Bild Zeitung, we have to play with a pink shirt at the world <laughs> at the Euros. Of course we do, and so on and so on. So you just you just see there is a flow, there is a positive flow in and around the German national team at the moment. Towards the end here, a couple of talking points. First, big controversy in Germany that the very I mean, the very foundation of German business, the very staple, one of the stalwarts of German business, Adidas and Germany, have been intrinsically tied for the last, is it 54 years or of, of the kind? They have now, DFB have now announced that they will, um, they will sign with Nike from 2027 in a deal worth 100 million euros, I believe, uh, annually. What what do you make of that? Because there's obviously the nostalgic side, the sentimental side, and then there's the the business side of things. Well, um, they signed with Adidas in 1950. Not even I was around at the moment. Uh, Adidasla, who who made that deal for them, legendary 
entrepreneur, not naturally 54 at the World Cup in Bern when he came with the, with the new shoes. That apparently and so the story so goes, important. right? That's why they won the World Cup. Exactly. And I've learned uh, that there was, there, there was a period in the 70s that had Umbro. I didn't, I didn't know that I, or I, I didn't notice that. But Adidas has been Germany for all, like nine, since 1950. They, they tried that before, Marcus. Oliver Bierhoff was the uh, kind of CEO of sport in Germany. They tried to have Nike. Then there was an uproar. This can't happen. And it was quite interesting, Marcus, that the reactions in Germany was exactly like the, the, the couple of days reaction in England about the, the St. George's cross uh, on the back of the, the shirts. And suddenly that's been happening before. But now pr suddenly that was the main thing. And I'm not saying that it's right wingers, but it's a, a lot of the, the, the shirts kind of deal shirt of looking of the shirts has gone into the cultural war that is around us, which is quite interesting to see. And it's and and we've had in Germany as well a lot of politicians coming out. This is a disgrace. This is that this is you can't have that. This is all about the German manufacturers and all that, uh, all these issues. Having said that, Marcus, uh, 50 million euro apparently added us a year, 100 million, as you were saying, Nike. I think this will calm down. Uh, Nike will come in. They will stay for some years. Adidas will have Bayern. They are a, they are a part owner as, of Bayern as well. I think uh, my former under-21 teammate, Bjorn Gulden, Norwegian now CEO of Adidas, wouldn't, wouldn't have loved this to happen, but he, he needs to be realistic. And I, I guess Bjorn will be that this could happen one day. So, yeah, it was a big, big thing. But from 2027, this is the... Um, this is reality. Nike will be the, the the provider of the German national team. I might have to cop one of those shirts that they released, though. Either home kit or the or the away kit. They are I nice. Like, I like Marcus. Marcus, I like shirts. I think that you you have kind of. I mean, since you when you were born, I mean, I, I can't go past a sports shop because <laughs> you had so many shirts. We always had to buy you shirts, but I'm back I now. love all you. Yeah, yeah, I'm back now, and, and you gave me to a present for my my birthday. You gave me the the, the Venezia uh, yeah, Vene third kit, yeah. third kit, brilliant. I love in, that in shirt. long sleeve too. I love it. We're going a bit sentimental, you know. No, back yeah, we're to going the era of long sleeve. No, I like. I that. love the. I love the England shirt. I love the pink uh, German uh, shirt. I even love. I love the Norwegian shirt as well. There, there is a a lot of uh, there is a lot of. Uh, uh, discussions around how how big the flag is going to be and where the the flag going to be on the shirt. Norway made it easy. They made a shirt out of the flag, so they just changed it all around. But, but I loved it. Uh, I had uh, my uh, my talk show that I have uh, at Ullevall Stadium before the game. We have the brand manager of, uh, of the FA. There it was very interesting to 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 listen to him. Uh, about the process of how to make a shirt. Maybe we, we should get him on here. Marcus, I think that's because, a good idea. I think yeah, that would be very interesting. Yeah, and they gave, came back to one of the Vikings, the guys who who uh, put Norway together, so to say, and very interesting and how they used the colors. So yeah, we'll get him on. It was very interesting how they, they thought about it. Nothing left to coincidences. Uh, we can like it or dislike it, but there is a... Uh, a thinking behind uh, and yes but i have to say marcus before we end because i'm i'm i will do the uh the euros for servus tv austrian tv what about austria ralf ragnick they the first they beat slovakia 2 nil away from home then they play in turkey at home 6-1 they won i mean what a result that is gregorich gregorich freiburg striker with a hat trick as well People uh, scoring it. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of good players, but they are, they are a very difficult group with, with the Netherlands and and it's a France, Netherlands, yeah, and Netherlands, France, France, and then who's the fourth team? Uh, they got a, a, a yeah, it's Poland, I think. Poland, Poland, I think. Who, <laughs> Poland who qualified. What a what a game! I was following all the playoffs. Poland beating Wales on 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 penalties. Yeah. My friend Olga Harad for Iceland one nil up seven minute, minutes before the end. And then Ukraine. Went through. I think a lot of the world would like to, Ukraine to be at at the Euros, but still, I felt sorry for my my friend Olga Harada. Also worth mentioning, obviously, because of 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 the war in Ukraine and stuff, there is a big Ukrainian contingency in Germany, as it will be sort of in with Poland as well. So there's no doubt that with those two teams coming into the Euros, 
there'll definitely be a lot of Poles and a lot of Ukrainians there, which will add to the atmosphere. Okay. Having said that, I think that uh, that there was a mixed feelings among the event makers, so to say, in Germany, because Iceland, we know that how yeah, Iceland no, did at, at, at the tournament. Yeah, I, I have your points with Poland and Ukraine. I 100% yeah. agree with you. But the Greeks went out as well. Uh, the Greeks are doing a fantastic atmosphere. Uh, Wales doing a fantastic atmosphere. But still, it's going to be a fantastic tournament. And now with a German national team doing so well. So, yeah, we, we do look forward to the Euros, we we'll just have to do some league games before, and we have to have some title deciders, and then we'll be there. Yeah, the classicer is up. Dortmund, Bayern um, this weekend. Just on an ending note, that in terms of like the, the there's been a bit of uh, discussion in terms of um, the players going to national team duty and stuff like that. How do you see that in terms of in terms of the load, in terms of managing that, in terms of the interest that they need to maintain across the different federations and, and teams for the likes of someone like, obviously you saw Holland and Erdogan and the likes, etc. First of all, as a player, you can never be involved because you will always be between between the, 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 the two parties. And uh, a Pep Guardiola or Arteta or Klopp, if we use the England England setup and the title decider, they, they, will be, they will be frightening. And you, you saw now De Bruyne didn't go. He had a, a small injury. Robertson, Liverpool went injured. Uh, Erling Haaland and Martin Erdogan in the last game. Uh, Erling came uh, off after 62 minutes, and then Martin played on. Uh, I, I put I put a bit of excitement on Twitter. I said he's still on the pitch, and then I said, "Dear Arsenal fans, uh, Martin Erdogan is off. He's injured." Uh, and I said, "I'm frightened of them, but they're, they're both well." You can't do that. You, you, you can't. There's nothing you can do. I mean, Erling Haaland said in a press conference, the only thing Pep told me, he said, uh, if I come back injured, he will come after me. Uh, and I think that's the only thing you can do because you have to respect the, the national team. They don't have many games. They don't have many sessions. Uh, then, so then you have to go for it. And, and I like that. I like that the players like to play for the country. Uh, that is a proudness. And, and all kudos to uh, both Martin and Erling, uh, speaking as a Norwegian, doing a, a game, two, two games that didn't matter, so to say, except for the preparation into a, to a new season. That will be all for this uh, international break. A summary, Dad, there is a massive amount of optimism in Germany. But like you say, we have a few rounds of the Bundesliga getting towards the very end. We both have we have Champions League, we have Europa League, we have German Cup, we have uh, the whole lot to conclude the season. And then um, we'll have a little more focus uh, going into the Euros and, and, and the summer as such as well and see what we can uh, explore there. But there will certainly be an eventful last end of the season and during the summer. But for now, Dad, um, get some well-deserved rest. Get a sauna, get something. You've had a double <laughs> session today. Get, just relax, read a book, whatnot. Uh, listen to this podcast when it goes out and then we'll catch up um, on Monday. I do that, Marcus. I've been Krosky, Conrad, as I was saying. I've also been in the sauna and I'm reading the biography of Bob Paisley, the legendary Liverpool manager. And just at the end, before I say Alvin Dersen, player of the week for me, Andrich. I love Andrich. He is the key to German <laughs> success. Auf Wiedersehen, Marcus. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>